five is on my list again. It was on another list, also at number five, interestingly. <laughs> that darn cat. Oh, that darn cat. Yeah, it's actually a remake. It was, uh, it was originally made back in the 60s, I think. I don't know. It was also put out by Disney. I didn't know. Um, yeah, pretty terrible movie, no matter which way you slice it. It <laughs> still sucks. Yeah. 1965. Well, it tells you how bad it is that the original hadn't had an exclamation. It's that dark cat. New ones, that dark cat. No exclamation. No nothing. That's, Bitches. Also, notice the remake has the exclamation. That darn cat. Well, it was like that darn cat, and it also doesn't help. It's just silly yeah, I've, premise. Yeah, I've talked extensively about it in another video. I don't think we need to go into it much more. Yeah, um, bad story, eh, acting, Christina Ricci's alright in it, uh, weird shit going on around the town in the, in the movie. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, dumb story, dumb premise, just bad. That darn cat. So yeah, moving on, what's your number five? My number five is on a lot of these lists, and it's because... I actually like a few Gus Van Zandt movies. I actually rather <laughs> like Elephant, even though I know some people like, or no, that's Lars von Trier. Sorry, I'm getting my art house directors mixed up. Uh, what did Gus Van? Oh yeah, he also did Good Will Hunting. What I've seen of it, I've liked a lot. Why? Oh why? Did he do <laughs> an almost shot for shot remake of Psycho? I mean, there is almost Nothing different except for you can kind of make out that Vince Vaughn is jerking off while he's watching her. At one point. That's about it that he added to the movie. I mean, I actually kind of watched... I watched the original. I really like the original. I have it on Blu-ray. I decided to watch the original shortly before watching the remake. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. This scene's almost shot for... You fucking kidding me. Is this... Just, you, why is this a thing? Mm -hmm. And supposedly, Gus Van Zandt, in his arty pretension, mm -hmm. said, I did it so no one else would. Like, that's fucking stopping people, you stupid asshole. I, how far is your head hey. up your own ass? Seriously, do you have your head coming out of your mouth just because... You are that far up yourself. <laughs> There's no need for it. Psycho is still a movie that holds up. It still has its own... Eh. Sorry, it's on one time. <laughs> it yeah. still has its things. It still has its interesting moments. Yeah, it's a classic. Even though I have not seen it. It's a classic, <laughs> rightfully so. Why, if you're going to redo it, why do you not add anything to it? Well, I understand the need to... Remake classics anyway. One reason why yours, mine, and ours, like the, re the remake just pissed me off. I was like, why? There was no need for it. Mm -hmm. Classic is just awesome. Again, go see it. <laughs> this is one of those really bad examples of a movie that they didn't add shit to it. There's nothing added here. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of just the same stuff. It's like, why do I need to watch this so I can see it in color? Who fucking care? <laughs> yeah, Psycho by Gus Van Zandt is the, one of the worst fucking remakes I've ever seen. Because it's barely able to be called that. It's just almost like, oh, it's colored. Racist. <laughs> oh, like, but. maybe for the people who don't like watching stuff in black and white. But even then, it's not a better movie. Like I the mean, guy complained about... Um, Wizard of Oz, because <laughs> it's black and white. First of all, it's in sepia tone. It's and second of all, it's the first five minutes of the movie. Wait a minute or two. I was like, you... It's like, you've never seen a clip from this movie. It's like, it's very colorful. Yeah, just wait a little bit. It's just the beginning. Yeah, like, how have you avoided, like... I was like, how have you managed to not see even, like, a snippet 
of it where it's like really colorful because that's the majority of the movie and most well-known parts are in the colorful bits oh he needs to be kicked to his colorful bits <laughs> yeah uh, fuck psycho fuck gus van zandt so what about you you Number got a four, four? Number four and three were really difficult, but settled on number four, Flubber. <laughs> got to got to rewatch that recently. Got to like it was a pride a moment of pride for you. I got to rewatch this. <laughs> well, I was able to thanks to Netflix, and I was waiting to rewatch it because I remember for like like like. <laughs> Sorry, there's a weird jump cut there. Sorry, y'all. That cut something. Kitty. <laughs> yeah. She didn't decide to yell at me this time. <laughs> Anytime we have jump cuts, kitty. Yeah. I try to make them not as abrupt as they tend to be sometimes. I try not to go for Chris Stuckerman. Fuck that guy. Sorry. Don't like you guy. <laughs> Say, but, not flubber. <laughs> but yeah, I remember as a kid liking this movie. In fact, I even had it on VHS. And I was just trying to see, okay... Do I still like this movie as a kid or as a kid? As an adult. As, as an adult. You know, I was like, what did I like about it? And yeah. Wow. Just wow. It uh it's like no offense to Rob Williams. It's just all kinds of dumb, this movie. I mean there are some Is it too ropey? Huh? Are the are the jokes a little too hung out? I'm sorry, they weren't there. I was like, oh, I'm going to hell, but it's as bad as talking about Whitney Houston trying to go for a swim. <laughs> At, Please good to you. I was like, there's a storm going on inside. This rain, so you're going to have a skylight. Yeah, I'm going to have a skylight. I'm going to be like Wiley Coyote after getting struck by lightning or Bugs Bunny. I'm just like, I'm like, really having like a dark cloud hanging it was like all the <laughs> rain just right here it's like uh, yeah, like there were some like little funny bits mostly with um Ron Williams doing some physical comedy cause he's good at it yeah like, like this one thing like one time where he's like like flying around this gym just kind of bouncing on like, ah, ah, ah. it's like okay it's that, that's actually kind of funny that still kind of holds up as an adult and nowadays and uh, but yeah it's like dumb characters are dumb it, most of the actors like a lot of the actors cannot act like Will Wheaton he's actually in this movie what did Will Wheaton up out of <laughs> same place that I, Doug Clancy Brown up out of I think yeah I think we talked earlier in this video or maybe in the other video in the other video yeah Clancy Brown is in this he plays like one of the idiot goons of the bad guys, like not even the actual bad guys. I was like, oh my god, Clancy Brown, you are so much better than this. Like you must have just been desperate for money back in the nineties. <sighs> yeah, I think Will Wheaton was just fresh off of a uh, Next Generation. He was just, like just looking for work. He... I think I need money. What should I do? Flubber. I need money, not my mm -hmm. career debt. Yeah, and those who don't remember, this is like, that movie is actually a remake. I do know there is an original. Yeah, the original was called The Absent Minded Professor, because that's what, Brom what Ron Williams is. Yeah, well, Ron Williams is. He's absent minded enough that he forgets his own way like three times. How, why does she still marry him after the first? Well, like, when the movie starts, they're getting ready for their third wedding, and she keeps having to remind him. And she says, if you are not there this time, then that's it. So if you can't remember this time... Why give him that many chances? Well, because she knows that he's a little scatterbrained, a little absent-minded. Well, it's, I mean, it's not like four ways at a funeral where he just keeps oversleeping. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, even then, that's not really his wedding, is it? Oh, he, he was going to oversleep his wedding. <laughs> yeah, at the very end. <laughs> and whenever they finally revealed to him, no, they fucked with him and they just woke him up at the right time because they knew he was going to oversleep. Also, you see he has like 30 clocks around yeah. his bed. And watch him scrambling around. Mm -hmm. What time is it? Uh, it's 9.30. Oh, 
two o'clock. Yeah, hey, Miraz, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Why you? Why do I see you doing that to someone? I don't know. They're like, I'm innocent. Yeah, I'm innocent as can be. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so, what's your number four? My number four is a not remake, not thing, whatever it is. It's supposed to be a sequel, but it's not, because it is a remake and a reboot. Talked about it in more stuff for last year. Sorry for the camera's moving. She's pushing on one of the legs. Blair fucking witch. <laughs> Just let you know that's on my list. Oh my god, Blair Witch. Why does this exist? Why? <laughs> Is it a thing? I mean again, like I said, during my contentious top ten, the one even top or the uh top ten worst movies of last year. It was on my worst of last year as well. Yeah, um it doesn't add anything to the original. In all mm -hmm. essence, it is just... Rehashing! Yeah, it's Hollywoodizing the original. Because the original was a very non-Hollywood movie. This one is is a very Hollywood movie. And because that, it's terrible. It's a lot of stupid stuff that happens throughout that movie. And it's still unintentionally funny when it shouldn't be. What an age for movies. You don't have, like, pretentious indie filmers, filmmakers... Or you have, like, pfft, you know, Hollywood people just... If this on a, on a screen, pretty much. It's like, let's Hollywoodize it. And that's the worst part. It just adds nothing to the film by the end of it. It's like, you yeah, get... what you told me, it's like, it just rehashes the first one. Yeah, it's a lot of similar stuff, except for at the end, like, it ends on a... They still end on a dour note and everything. Yeah, and everybody gets killed. Yeah. Well, everybody kind of technically dies at the end of the first one as well, or the original. But it's a little bit more ambiguous. Like, this one's just, ah, everybody's dead because everybody's stupid. Da, 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 da. I think the only thing they had to is they updated it a little bit with the drones. Well, what what they could. Yeah, they well, tried to do with a little drone. Yeah, and both times, like, well, the first time it is, like, okay, is this, there's supposed to be something creepy. Then next time when they did it, it's like, oh, I fell off the sky. Who cares? Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody seemed to care. This movie came out, fell hard. It got released yes. on DVD recently. So dumb. People will just, like, chasing their tails, calling after each other. Yeah. Like, into the deep, dark woods. Well, it's supposed to get some of the essence of the original, because that's what they were doing. Right. But it doesn't doesn't have any of the charm of the original one. I still don't even like the original. Yeah, um, Blair Witch. Fuck that movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> That's my number four. So, what's your number three? Blair Witch. You guys said some. Well, I said it was on my list. Oh, you guess that was your number three. And could have moved on to my number three now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's really anything to add about Blair Witch. Uh, really dumb... Uh, boring. Not as boring as Fantastic Beasts, but... Pointless. I almost could have added that, because that was technically a reboot of the Harry Potter. It's, I mean, it's sort of it's a prequel. A it's a sequel. Or it's a prequel. It's not really a reboot, for se. Try, trying to reboot the Harry Potter franchise. It's not really trying to reboot well, it, trying, It's just trying to add to it. It's expanding the universe more than anything. Trying to get more money for J.K. Rowling. Yeah. J.K. Rowling needs in her house! I hope that movie just keeps not doing as good as they wanted to. Well, what's your number three? That's my book, honestly. My number three is gonna piss people off, and it technically is a reboot to a franchise. Man of Steel. That's also on my list, just FYI. Man of Steel is... Oh, okay, sorry, my cat threw me off of what she started to shirt clean herself with. Us. Uh, and she went, ah, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Kill him with fire. Oh, I don't mean you, Kitty. She's looking at me like, what? No, I love you, Kitty. You're staring at me. No, but... I... I had to know that the DC Entertainment mm -hmm. Universe, as I want to call themselves, instead of DC Cinematic Universe, you know D DCCU sounds slightly better than DCEU. Yeah, it's the Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Uh, they prefer uh, Entertainment Universe, is what they want to call it. 
Fuck him. No, because he's... <laughs> that's like Snyder, Snyder then. And I would be afraid about getting his uh, shit all over my dick. Not Leo. <laughs> I don't know why I put that. Um, I know people like Man of Steel. I know some people are stupid, too. <laughs> I also know that people can have varying tastes. I, though, cannot get behind a movie that so poorly treats Superman. And you're yet, not even a fan of him. Yeah, I'm not a huge That's... fan of Superman. But I do want a character to at least be similar to what he would be yeah. no matter what. Like People are like, well, this is how Superman would be treated nowadays. Why? They're trying to say we're all paranoid. Yeah, there are certain people paranoid. But why would people be paranoid of a guy who has powers? Because he's different? Like, yeah. That's the X-Men fucking story. He has a... It's like, yeah, I can understand people nowadays would kind of like, okay, what what's his agenda? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe kind of wondering, like, maybe he's just trying to soften us up so he can kill us all or something. I, like, I maybe get that little bit of paranoia. What really gets me is the fact that he's a fucking murderer. Well, not only that, but he's careless. And people are like, well, it's his first time. No, he's I been mean, on this planet for a while, and he just cares nothing for one, wanton destruction, punches people through gas stations and other shit. It's like, yeah, sure, go through the 7-Eleven that somehow everybody supposedly survived through. Or the IHOP. Yeah. Poor Pete. Yeah. We talked about in Monster Trucks, there was some bad product placement. Wow. Do I get tired of seeing U-Hauls get thrown around? Or see them go through the Sears? Go visit that appliance section, folks. Go to, And while you're there, go to 7-Eleven and get you a Slurpee. And then go to IHOP and get some delicious pancakes. Holy shit, the product placement in this movie. <sighs> and also, there's a lot of, if I'm not mistaken, Nokia stuff or Sony. It's one of the phone companies. There's... Budweiser advertisement. <laughs> this movie, it reeks of corporation just putting its nasty, slimy tentacles. I work for one. Fucking Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about my job because I actually am going to do something about that. I'm going to speak to y'all about it. Yeah, Rantings and Ravens, I'm going to speak about better. But, I mean, you just get all this grime, and I guess that's the reason why you have this grimy movie. We don't understand why is this Superman so uncaring? I mean, that's the worst part. He doesn't seem to care. Like, he just uses his powers cuz. Because we don't have a Pa Kent who says, yes, you should use your powers for good and only good. You know, and leads him on the right path. And, and you're meant for greater things than just staying here on his farms. Like, you have a duty to help people. Yeah. And he's, or, you know, say anything like, be what you want to be, but be good. That's all I ask of you, yeah. son. It's like, I know you are, you are not my blood son, but you are my son. Yeah, we don't even really get that. It's like, okay, you're just this thing, just a kid we have around here. Yeah, they don't really share a good moment together. I mean... Yeah, we don't really get a father-son type bond going on. Yeah, you get a good father-son bond between Paul and Clark in freaking Lois and Lane in the first episode of the series. Much less, you don't get that throughout this entire movie. And it really hurts this movie. You don't feel like Superman belongs. And I know they're like, well, well, he doesn't belong. Well. But that's the thing. That's not Superman. Superman is a guy who... Superman is who he is to save people. Clark is who he actually is. Yeah, as he even puts it in Lois and Clark... Superman is what I can do. Clark Kent is who I am. Yeah. That's the reason why I don't believe any of this bullshit. Like, Kill Bill, the... Never mind, a fucking pretentious <laughs> fucking end for that series. Goddamn. <laughs> Great first movie. Shitty second movie. It's like, I really want somebody to edit that together and actually put the action sequences with the rest of that movie. I, I love Lucy Liu in that. What little I've seen in that. It's like, all oh, calm. It's like, okay, let me explain to you. If you have a problem, just come to me. It's like... Talk about my hair, just it? like I'll click your fucking head like this fucker right here. So if everyone has a problem, now's the fucking time. Oh, there you go, Lucy. It's like 
I ain't fucking with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I ain't, I ain't messing with you, girl. But, yeah, they go on about, it's like, well, hey, that, that's, that's Superman making fun of us. <laughs> no, it isn't Quentin Tarantino. I don't care how much coke you sniff off of Lucy Lou's boobs to try and come it's, up with yeah, that it's, idea. It's so he can help people while also having a somewhat normal life. Yeah, because that's who he is. He is Clark Kent. He is not Superman. Yeah, that's the way he was raised. Yeah. I know some people may say, well, that's all the new comics were. That doesn't mean the new 52, which everybody agreed, was a terrible idea and terribly done. That's the reason why they went, oh, shit. <laughs> it's so terrible. We need to do Rebirth. Yeah. yeah, Superman is not gritty. Superman... He just, he does good. He tries to help people whenever he can. This is the guy who refuses to kill Darkseid because he doesn't want to stoop to his level. Yeah, it's how he just tries to, like, either capture him somewhere or, like, send him out into outer space where he can't harm anybody. Yeah, like shoving him into, oh, uh, what's the name of that wall? But, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> Pretty much it's the one, it's the wall that has, like, it's like, here, here's what's going to happen throughout the rest of the timeline. Oh, the... Yeah, I think that's what I know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Yeah, but, like, yeah. that's a sign of Superman being an awesome hero. That's the reason why the Superman-Batman comics they had from mm -hmm. the early 2000s were one of the best things I've seen DC put out. I would love for Linkara to maybe eventually do an entire review of the Superman-Batman comics. Mostly just because it wouldn't be too much, because I think it's like 75, 80 issues or so. It's not a, not like him trying to do his Blue Beetle. He talked about all Blue Beetle, and that took him a little bit. <laughs> like, he could devote an entire month to that, and it would actually not take him for every day, he feels like, to yeah. do it. But you have some great Superman bits, and Superman bounces Batman so well in that series. And it's... Really awesome to see them work together, and it's really awesome to see Superman do some heroic stuff. In fact, he asked a really good question of Batman, and he asked when it came to them find out there's all this artificial kryptonite, and he's just he looks at Bruce at one point and says, "Bruce, should we actually be getting rid of this?" Shouldn't we keep this just in case? I mean, Superman's thinking of everybody else. He's selfless. Yeah. Man of Steel, he's not. He's a selfish asshole. He doesn't yeah, care. He, he's like, he just kind of wants to keep his head down. And if someone needs help, it's like, it's like, well, I guess I can, like, help him. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll destroy this man's livelihood because he's a bit of a jerk-off. Yeah, he's a jerk-off, but he could just frighten him. Through any means. I mean, I'm sure it's more of a Batman thing and it would anger me a little bit. But him just like, ah, fuck you, I'm killing your truck. You're just a dickhead. That's not Superman. Yeah, like I said, Superman is not gritty. I had a thought in my head, <laughs> so I lost it. Superman is heroic. He's not a guy who you yeah. fear. He's... Oh, now I remember what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about people being afraid of him. It's like, yeah, I can see that. But you know what? A good way to counteract that, because this is totally what Superman would do, is to try to do good. Try to be good. Try to show people. It's like, I just want to help. He would like, I, like, I have no hidden agenda. I'm just, I'm just, I want to help. Yeah. I want, I'm here to help. He would speak to people. He would explain what he, why he is here or what he wants to do. And he would just say, I'm just here to help. If you have any questions, if y'all want to speak with me, come to me. I am here. Yeah. You know? And I know Zack Snyder, and also just to speak about beyond the fact of raping the character, but the other issues with this movie, the fucking symbolic bullshit of Jesus shit. Oh mm -hmm. my God, I am so over this. Like, it, yeah, it's kind of been done to death in various Superman incarnations, including on uh, Smallville. But yeah, they kind of really kind of beat you over the head with it in Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, well, Man of Steel, I think, is a little bit worse. Uh, Batman v Superman has the issue of him, he's rising back from the dead. Oh, yeah, he's Jesus. I don't know. Yes. But, and also, him, 
the people are like all towards him. Like yeah, him like the sun shining on him while he's like just kind of floating there, descending from on high. It's like I know that people like, want this. Yeah, and it's like I get it, symbolism. Yeah. But it's to the point where you're like, it's not what makes Superman interesting. Anymore. That's one of the problems. Like we don't need this point of symbolism, especially considering a lot of people even say, comic book lovers included. Superman's not Jesus. He never even pretends to be a god. Yeah. Um, one of the issues I've had with Kyle Calgren, his whole between the lines talking about Superman. And uh, Superman is a god. No, he never pretends to be. He never even wants to be thought of as one. A god is infallible. Superman is fallible. He is constantly making mistakes that he does know, but he does his best to try and correct them. Yeah, he knows that he makes decisions that... You know, he tries to do what's best for everyone, but sometimes the decisions he makes have unintended uh, negative consequences mm -hmm. that he, you know, that nobody really can foresee. It's like, yeah, he, and he does his best to try and think everything through, but he knows sometimes he's probably going to make an, make an error in his judgment or something like that. And that's what makes Superman an interesting character. It's when he admits his mistakes, he does what he can do, and he actually kicks some ass. In this, we get a Superman who's willing to make countless mistakes, but owns up to none of them. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, oh well, this happened. Yeah, like the reason why it infuriates so many people, and people are like, oh well, who cares? It's just a little line. When the Jenny Olsen, uh, I know they're like, I include Jimmy. You fucking murdered him in the second one, Zach. No, that's not a good thing. It's not making up to the fans. Like you. It's like you can barely get to acknowledge that he's, he's him. Even though he's not really a reporter, he's like an undercover... CIA guy. And just yeah. Just offed. Yeah, just masquerading as a reporter. And then they like quickly make him and it's like, okay, let's kill him. Yeah, and he's dead. It's like, oh, thanks, Zach. You're a nice asshole. But, like, whenever the not Jenny said... Or her name is Jenny. I don't know if her last name's Olsen. I fucking don't care. <laughs> I think Pardon. it is. But... Yeah. I think it is too. When she says, he saved us. Reason why people pick apart that line and hate it. If Superman truly had saved them, he would have looked out for their lives. He would have looked out for their livelihoods. He would have looked out for everything. Mm. He would have saved them. Yeah, he would have lured Zod into a, a less he, populated area. He would have lured him into a desert. He would have taken him to the Antarctic. He would have taken him anywhere. He would have punched him through deep into a cavern underneath the earth so less sun could get on him. Anything. This Superman doesn't care. He is willing to... Like, oh, I'm just going to punch him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a cool spectacle to watch somebody destroy stuff. But whenever you just have him pointlessly doing it, especially whenever we know this is not what he would do, it's part of the reason why, like... Transformers can get away with more destruction porn than Superman because Transformers aren't known for caring about civilian lives. That's the reason why there's a joke about the robot chicken where Optimus Prime got a um, prostate cancer and they were talking about, we killed 37 humans in the crossfire. A new record! The reason why that's hilarious because they kind of don't care. They never were that kind of a characters. Characters, yeah. <laughs> That's the reason why we can put up with that in Transformer movies and not our Superman movies. If people are like, oh, well, those are... that's the reason why we have issues. Although, although we still point out the Transformers, like, well, that person's dead. Yeah, well, that least... fucker's dead. It's like, well, these people are dead. Yeah. Oh, well, those we... bitches dead. We were even pointing out a couple times in Monster Trucks earlier. Yeah, well, P's dead. It's like, hmm. It's like, well, those people are dead. Yeah, and it's just infuriating to see a person who totally doesn't get a character. I mean, he wanted to... Zack Snyder wanted to make a Batman movie, instead made a terrible Superman movie. Mm -hmm. Actually, I feel hard calling it a Superman movie. It's like yeah. he pretty much made a Cyborg movie. Yeah. With Cyborg having to have complete flesh. Yeah. As I've said numerous times before, but I'll say it again, Superman is not for everyone. Just like you know, Batman's not for everyone. Wonder Woman's not for everyone. It's like, you know what? There is a million other superheroes and even super villains to root for, you know, that you can choose from in the DC world or even in Marvel or, you know, anywhere else. It's like, 
there's so many to choose from it's like pick the one you want but don't try to change the ones that are already there don't try to change them to suit what you want that superhero to be yeah, whenever that's think, oh, not who they are yeah just because you think oh he's all powerful and yet he's so boring like because he's like he's a do-gooder he's um very boy scoutish yes exactly not quite a shazam level yeah he's very yes ma'am yes sir he has a very polite very uh mild mannered mm -hmm. there we go <laughs> for lack of a better term yeah it's like he's very mild mannered people find that boring it's like i actually love that actually you know manners needs to come back needs to make a comeback yeah and it's like i actually would like i think i've said before the reason why one of my favorite superman stories is actually this one where Superman is having to deal with the fact he has... It's just a two-issue little series where Superman talks about he knows this guy's beating his wife. And it's the reason why I love that Superman actually has to think what to do. I mean, wow, what is Superman really going to do about that? He has to write the injustice, but I love one of the phrases that the writer put in there. I could drop him out the window, but that's not what I'm going to do. Yeah. He, he acknowledges, I can easily deal with this, but I can't. Yeah, I was like, I could do this, but that's not who I am. Yeah. And he's like, and he even says, like, I'm afraid to go up to him and confront him as Superman, not because I'm afraid of him or anything like that. I'm afraid what he's going to do to her. Superman caring about another human being or himself. And he talks to Lois about it. And if I'm not mistaken, by the end of it, Lois actually helps to deal with it. Not showing Superman as being impotent, but actually showing that Superman isn't the be-all end-all that people try to make him out to be. He can't solve every inch. Yeah, he tries issue. to figure out all angles, but sometimes... He needs to go to somebody who will figure it out better. Yeah, yeah. sometimes he does need help from Batman. He can figure out angles that you know, Superman totally wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, or Wonder Woman can give him the sheer brutality because none against Wonder Woman's character but she is more of a warrior she's willing to go to the place that Superman won't yeah and as much as I love Superman it's like I do agree with your assessment I don't believe we I don't know if we said these in other videos but uh, I do believe I do agree with your assessment that Wonder Woman would not be good with Superman because she would not put up with his shit yeah it's like you know, she would want to be more of the man who can get shit done. Yeah. The reason why Wendy needs to be a Batman. If we're going to ship anybody, let's ship Wendy and Batman. It's like, yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. And maybe when it gets, things get a little rough, he's like, hey. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why I made Batman Joey, but yeah, I did. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's a... Big, long, fucking drawn-out thing. But yeah, Man of Steel is still a I giant piece of shit. Yeah. Mostly because of how they treat the character, but it also does not help the movie's not... It's poorly written, <sighs> yes. poorly directed, and it's a long set, too. I mean, it's a two-hour-long movie that feels four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but sorry to be taking up so much time. What about you for two? My number two. Your number shit. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is on your list. I think it's probably going to be number one. No, anything. Ghostbusters. I was just going to say, yeah, it's my number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just... <sighs> Why did this need to be rebooted? Or if it's going to be rebooted, like... Have them be with... A... First of all, actually funny Cast. people. Yeah. Yeah, and have like I probably have like the original people, you know, kind of you know, passing, or you know, something. Yeah, passing the torch. It's like, oh here, you take over. You know, we're retiring now. You know what would have been awesome? If they had kind of mousy Tina Fey be Egon's daughter and Sigourney Weaver and Peter Venkman, you know, with a really it would be so touching instead of what we fucking got in this movie. I will get into, I'm sorry, I will bitch a little bit more about this movie <laughs> when we get to my number one. Because, yeah, it is my number one. Mm. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> but, um, 
have her and Sigourney Weaver, Peter Venkman, they are looking at her, you know, and they're talking to her, you know, they're talking about, it's like, we know you don't want, one, want this for you. That would bring a tear to my eye. Mm -hmm. and I would be like, oh, it's sweet, especially honoring Harold Ramis's passing. You know, and just saying, it's like, we know he is gone, you know, he would want this for you. He would want, he would want his daughter to go on, especially if it was, say, like, um, what's her face? Is, uh, no, because they put him, put her with Rick Moranis' character. Can't remember her name, uh, the secretary, who's still fantastic. Yeah, uh, Annie Potts? Yeah, Annie Potts. Yeah. We got, uh, Gabe's the one back out. Again. Yeah. Yeah, I think I caught that in time. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been nice to have something like that or have Sigourney Weaver and Annie Potts kind of, you know, mm -hmm. maybe she is Annie Potts' uh, daughter and then hinting at her and Egon eventually, you know, got together. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, anything. Yeah, I'm not, I'll say more when we get to me because I'm going to bitch him on again. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get it both again. Yeah. More you want to say about it? Uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't funny. Didn't really need to be remade or rebooted, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people make a big deal about the all-female cast. I'm all for girl power, but this, like, like I said, just un unnecessary. Just, I, didn't, I think I added nothing to it. Yeah, choose good female characters. Yeah, okay. like if you're gonna make a big deal about it. It's like at least choose women who are funny. It's like maybe keep Melissa McCarthy. Mm -hmm. You know, take out some of the queef jokes. Let Melissa McCarthy actually be funny when she can be funny. Yeah, it's like, let some of the people, like, let, let some of the actresses loose. Oh, why would they do that? Maybe keep it in Chris Hemsworth with the glasses. Not stupid. I know, I know he's... I don't mind him being hunky and let him be kind of goofy and everything, but make him a nerd, actually. Make him actually a that super smart cool. nerd. Like, maybe like a Clark Kent type... Oh my god. You know it would be a funny end joke? Oh, I see this Thor guy? Oh, he's so awesome. Of course, I know you'd have to get the rights to Marvel, but hey, Sony. I know you can work with Marvel. Or maybe kind of like make fun of that with the uh, reading a comic book about another Norse god. Yeah. Like maybe a very muscular uh, Odin or something. Or Balder or something like that. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> We've already rewritten this movie yeah. and made it like 12 times better. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, I was like, ah. Oh. Show me like, my. Yeah, I can imagine Chris Hemsworth with glasses on and not like, like actually being sort of an. I was like, ah. Oh. Hi, honey, I'm home. It's like, ah. Oh. Especially if he was like. He's hot. Especially if he was kind of like, you know, kind of shy around the women and, you know, they're kind of like. Well, like, try, like, try not to take up as much space as he yeah, normally he just, does because he, like, he's. He's, he's a little bit of uh, Christopher not. Reeve in Superman movies. Yeah. That would be... That yeah, would be like, that totally worked for Christopher Reeve. Because, like... like he's, he's a big, tall some bitch. Yeah, he was. I was angling up his exact height. Yeah, but, six foot two or three. Yeah, and whenever you got to see him at his full height during one scene when yeah, one he's scene all where being take, mousy. Takes off the glasses, he's like he's preparing he's, to out himself to Lois, but then he chickens out, takes off the glasses and stands to his full and imposing height. It's like Yeah, it's like that actually like that actually worked. You know, mm -hmm. him like kinda hunching over and then just kinda standing straight as Superman. You know, it's like that totally sold it. <coughs> yeah, much better than what they ended up with doing. Sorry, my throat's a little. He tough. is six four. Or was let me say. Yeah. I would say the accident and then death. Yeah, it's funny is. Uh, Tom Welling sit like six three. Yes, uh, Brandon Ralph six two. Henry Cavill is the shortest one of them, six one. Shortest, I mean. Six. Yeah, Dean Kane's Cain like six two. I want to say. Six yeah, two, the six waist. Two. I know he's, he's got he's a little chunky. A little. There's soup that's not as chunky as him. Oh, bad. Uh, but moving on to your number two. My number two, I've done an actual written review for it. I still hate this movie with a passion. Fucking Hitcher. I actually like the original. It's 
tense. There's some really good parts. Like, you don't have to see... There's a lot of stuff you don't see that helps to build the suspense for this film. And wow, does this see, this remake not do any of that. Mm -hmm. It's bad. You got Sean Bean in it. Oh, yeah. He, some bitch does die in it, so... Of course he dies. Um, we, we can't keep him alive. Oh yeah, he don't stay alive. It, there's some kind of like almost competition thing between him and another actor. Like they keep constantly getting killed in movies and shows and stuff. Put them together. It's like you will die. I will die. Or I I will die. No, you will. I will die. I well, well, it's like D.B. Sweeney and uh, Skeet Ork. Rich, oh, they can kill any show they're on. The competition will see how many shows they can shut down. I bet if I'm on the show from one season, I'll kill it. Huh, I'm going to get on your show to kill your show. Mm. <laughs> Bitches. Damn it, I like these shows you are on sometimes. Yeah, um... Uh, Sean Bean, he does a really good job. That's a problem. Because there's nothing interesting about this remake. Mm -hmm. It kind of tries to beat for beat the f first movie, but none of it's done as well as the first movie. It's not thrilling in the least. It's not very suspenseful in any possible imagination. And the worst part is that you don't care about the main characters. We're supposed to be weary about them possibly getting killed by Sean Bean, who's this maniacal killer who's kind of chasing them around. Oh, but you don't care about them. There's nothing interesting about them. They're fucking plastic. I mean, all, almost seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, all plastic surgery, I'm pretty sure they have. They're just, they're forgettable characters. It's a forgettable script. And for such a good original film, that's just why I'm so angry with this movie. <laughs> it could be so much more than what it is. That's why Man Steel was not number two. Yeah. Because this is this has angered me almost even more than Man of Steel. This almost made me walk out of the theaters. I have walked out of... I don't think I've walked out of a single movie, actually, in my life. Not not like... Well, I've went to the bathroom like during a movie or something like that. That's about it. I've but never, you came back. Yeah, I've never just walked, walked out. Walked out and just never came back. Yeah, uh, only two movies, and they're both at the top of this list, made me almost do that. This one, I was like... Grab me and I'm like, I need to hold on to this chair because I'm either going to chunk it or I'm going to get up and go. Might do both. It was, it was some. It was an anger inducing trip. Let me put it that way. Uh, so. And now we're pretty much done because both our number ones we have already discussed at length. I have not touched upon my number one anymore. But I would like for you to touch mine, upon your number one. Mine is Man of Steel. Yeah, you had to have just seen that coming. Yeah. I, just, uh. I think she won this list just to do that. <laughs> no, no, I just... It, just haven't have chosen that. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, it's like, I am such a big Superman fan. It's quite pissing me off what they did to his character. It's like... Uh. Doran's opinion. Yeah. See? Even nature itself agrees with us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck with Mother Nature, don't fuck with Superman. Well, also it really doesn't help that with Man of Steel, even, let's say they got his character somewhat close. It's not an interesting movie. Yeah. Like, it's a surprisingly dull flick. Yeah. Also, piss me off, like, like you were saying, piss me off about uh, Jonathan Kent. It's like, <laughs> what were they supposed to do? Let them die? Maybe. Maybe. It's like, he thinks about it for a minute, and then, maybe. You almost want to go, that, that's not what any human being would say. Yeah, like, that's not something that Jonathan Kent would say. Like, I remember, like, the very second episode of Smallville, um, like, it starts off with Clark waking up floating above his bed because he has a dream about flying. And then later in the episode, he tells Jonathan about it. And Jonathan says, well, I wish I had all the answers for you, son, but... Unfortunately, I don't. We're just going to have to figure them out together. Yeah, he says something to that effect, and it's like, yeah, that is something that Jonathan Kent would say. Nah, they don't want this Jonathan Kent to be nice, human, memorable. Just might have chose Kevin Costner. 
but um, yeah, I think there was even an episode on the show one time where um, Jonathan pretty much took the uh, Charmed philosophy, and by that I mean on Charmed, like they were real big on protecting their secret, protecting magic from being exposed, but in one episode they said, uh, protecting our secret is important, but never more important than saving innocent. And Jonathan Ken said something to that effect in one episode. It's like, it's like that right there is Jonathan Kent. It's like, the, what was I supposed to do? Let them, let them die? Maybe. Like people, oh, he's not saying that he, that he should let them die. No, but he is stating that he, Superman should have an it. ambiguous feeling towards us. Like, he shouldn't. Superman should... That's why he doesn't give a shit. Because his dad doesn't give a shit. Yeah, nah, who cares? And no, then he lets Superman. himself die when he when his son could have easily saved him. And it's like, nobody would have seen him. Or they would have just, like, chalked talk, it up to... It's like, oh, the wind carried him. I was like, okay. Yeah, he got hit by a wind that pushes away. Anybody who lives in a state where tornadoes happen. It's also, I love that that tornado spawns the fuck out of nowhere. It's like, oh, it's there. You couldn't just let Jonathan Kent die in the comic books like I did with a heart attack. No, it's gotta be big. No, they gotta do something different. Like, like in the new Ninja Turtles, I like, I like the new Ninja Turtles movie, but, like, they're really just, ugh, they're really just great of my cheese. <laughs> the fact that, like, they were actually, um, April's pets when she was a kid, and she was the one that named was like, Oh, Splinter Nina, fuck you. It's like, Nyeh. It's like a kid, you're trying to do something different, especially since the origin story has been told many, many times over, but. Storm agrees with that too. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Any more you want to say about Man of Steel? No, we don't really have all night. <laughs> well,. So your number one, I'm guessing, is Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters. It's still a terrible remake. It's a terrible movie, even yeah. if you. Yeah, if this. If you, don't, was, if, you don't, if you don't compare it to the. Yeah, to just the, the just on its own merits, it's not good. It's not yeah. funny. It's Only not interesting. Only good part is the end credits. Chris Hemsworth dancing like a goofball. Yeah, and even then they cut that out of the movie for some reason. It's like y'all got it set up right there. Yeah. It's like leave it in the movie. Don't. Put in the end credits. I mean, this is a movie that could have been done so many different ways. Like That's I what can, we were even talking about. Yeah, you can recast most everybody. If you want to keep Melissa McCarthy because she supposedly has draw power to help with the boss would, you know, make you think otherwise. <laughs> but I mean, you just don't have a good cast, you don't have a good script, you don't have good effects. You don't have a good movie. I mean, I'm being nice to saying it's not a good movie. It's a terrible film. I mean, this is beyond the fact, oh, well, it's females. I wouldn't even care if they did a female cast of Ghostbusters. Or anything. That wouldn't bother me at all. I just want good females who are that. I don't want these shitty people who don't know how to act or on top of things are not funny like Kristen McKinnon. And people are like, oh, well, she's Kate awkward. McKinnon. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm thinking probably Kristen Wiig and her. Yeah. That, that's how interchangeable they are to me. The only difference is Kate, McKe Kate McKinnon is, oh, she's awkward, so she's hilarious. No, Ben she's, Stiller's awkward. He's not fucking hilarious. No, she's He's not, terrible. She's not awkward. She's just, like, out there, like, saying stuff. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. She's awkward. It's that, yeah. oh, I said something that's kind of weird. That's you might as well have her drop the N-word just because, yeah. ooh, ooh. Yeah, she doesn't realize weird. Everybody's just looking at her like, like well, except, said, well, except that, for Melissa McCarthy, like, Whatever. Like I said, that's awkward human. That's what awkward human <laughs> is. I mean, it, it's actually like, wow, this is a thing? Why is it done this way? I could give you a billion different people. Hell, why I have, like I said, Tina Fey would be neat as doing pretty much your straight lace person. She can do straight lace really funny. Possibly Which, Amy Poehler. Yeah, Amy Poehler, they, her and Tina Fey work really well together. Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez can be really funny and really weird. With her odd juxtaposition with how she says certain things, how she does certain things, it's really fun to watch Michelle Rodriguez. When I have her be the pretty much prototypical, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, pretty much, oh, she's the black character. No, she's not black. She's mm -hmm. Hispanic. You know, and 
If you want to have your token black character, I don't know. So is Aldonia. There you go. She can actually be funny. Watching mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy, she can be funny. Loser, she's actually funny whenever she's supposed to do stuff. I, I still like people getting on to Guardians of the Galaxy and it's like, oh, she doesn't have any speaking lines. Or very, very little. Yeah, very little like, lot. She is a strong, silent type. She speaks with her with her knives, you know. <laughs> yeah, like she'll just give you a look like, shut up. Or stab you. She's like, well, I'll just stab you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that's bad that, that... That's the character. Yeah. But it's just so bad that you they don't know how to cast. It's pretty much because it's who Paul Feig likes, even though he doesn't understand what any of them can actually do. Ugh. Possibly does not understand comedy. He doesn't seem to understand also, like, basic directionship. I mean, this movie doesn't look good. I mean, like, the camera work is poor at best. I mean, Joss Whedon, I like a lot of his work. I love the two Avenger films he did. He still has poor camera work. Yeah. He is miles above Paul Feig. <laughs> uh, watch the original if you want to see an actually good comedy. I mean, I don't get it. I don't get anybody who loves this movie. It's like, mm. or even kind of likes it. Because it's a train wreck through and through. Made you want to disown somebody? Yeah. <laughs> disown your family? Yeah, they said, it's hilarious. Fuck you, it's, it's better than the original. Fuck you! Blasphemer! <laughs> yeah, this one's no! It's like, you know what's better than the original? The second one. I don't agree with that statement. <laughs> but I will say the first, the second yeah, one was actually like, pretty close. To I, I thought the second one was actually better than the first one. That's your own opinion. But at least I will say it's like... A, yeah, it's like it's part of the original thing, though. Mm -hmm. At least. But at least yeah. it was some fun, yeah. though. It tried to have fun. It still tried to be interesting. Yeah. Not like this. Ghostbusters and name only did not try to be anything but terrible. With little appearances by some of the... Uh, by the original cast, except for... Um, Harold Ramis, of course. Yeah, he ain't coming back in this. <laughs> yeah, so you got Bill Murray... Yeah, Bill Murray, uh, you have, um... Sigourney Weaver, Annie Dan Potts. Dan Aykroyd. Dan, yeah, Dan Aykroyd. I ain't and, afraid of no ghosts. Like, and you also have, uh, uh, Ernie Hudson. I was gonna say, it's like, the black dude, I can't remember his name. Racist. I don't remember the black person. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Uh, I have a movie that he's in. I have a few movies he's in. Oh, but yeah. Fuck Ghostbusters. Still a terrible film. <laughs> I mean, even thinking about it now, it still angers me. Yeah, yeah, it's bad, but to me, Man of Steel is worse, but well, it, opinion. Yeah, it, still, they're both still shit. I mean, yeah. we, we do not disagree about that. Yeah. I thought Man of Steel was an excellent Oh, film. yeah, we do disagree on which one is worse, but we don't disagree. It's like, yeah, they're both terrible. That's putting it <sighs> mildly. Well, because of this list of anger inducing, you know, rage. What are we doing next time? I'm deciding that I want to do something lighthearted, positive, at least. Top ten best, something or other. Oh yeah, it's top ten best. And I want to do something positive that I know Nostalgic Creek just recently did something over this. Hey, I'm not stealing from him though. I, he did help kind of jog my idea because I was going that direction anyway. Yeah, the creative juices flowing. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't we talk about the top ten? Sequels are better than the originals. Hmm. Or better than the move better than any better of the movies one. that came from. Your first one, or they could be like a third movie like, in a series. Like Home Alone Two. If or, you want to include Home Alone Two. Follow the Bride Part Two. But it has to be better than a movie ahead of it. It can't be like Home Alone Two is better than four and five and three. No. <laughs> Does it count? After the second one, I just ignore them. <laughs> yeah, it has to be at least better than I still find the funny. first or second one. I still find it funny. Young, unknown Scarlett Johansson in the third one. Playing the main kid's older sister. And she needed money too. <laughs> yeah, she was also in North. She needed money too. <laughs> she was like, she was even younger than that. I was like, shit. Yeah, we're going to talk about the top ten sequels that are better than their predecessors, I guess is the best way mm -hmm. of putting it. Uh, 
So yes, we will be on that next week, so there'll be a lot less. So top ten sequels that are better than the originals. Yeah. So it'll be a lot less venom, less anger, and a lot less... That's what you think. Yeah. <laughs> so, we will get back with you in two weeks' time. Like I said next week, I'm sorry, y'all. I got your hopes up for like five seconds. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back with you two weeks' time with the sequels that are better than their originals. So, until then, don't watch this. this oh, don't ignore them. They don't exist. They don't, they never happened. It never got remade. <laughs> so we will see you all next time.